Welcome back to the channel everybody, I'm Dino. Now you may be new to the sport of snowmobiling, or maybe someone who's just returning to the sport after a long absence. Or possibly, like me, you're switching brands over to the Skidoo lineup and you've bought a late model Skidoo snowmobile. Well, this 900 Ace Enduro is exactly that, and when I bought it, I realized there were a few things that were different from my old snowmobiles that really aren't in the manual or maybe aren't that well explained, especially if you bought the snowmobile used, then maybe it's missing the manual. So today, I'm going to walk you through six things that I think every beginner or new to Skidoo snowmobile owner should know about. So sit back. Grab yourself something warm to drink and enjoy Dino's Tinker Shed. Now the snowmobile that you see sitting behind me here is a 2018 Skidoo Renegade Enduro uh, snowmobile. Now it is built on the XS chassis and comes with the 900 Ace four-stroke engine. And that's honestly the reason why I bought this particular snowmobile. Now previous to this, I was riding Polaris snowmobiles, which are fantastic. They are a really, really well-built snow machine. However, I was starting to get a little bit tired of the two-stroke engines. The reliability was there, but I was getting tired of carrying a lot of extra oil with me on longer trips, and the fuel economy was not all that good. The 900 Ace really is the engine I was looking for. It has a modest amount of horsepower, around 90, and for me, someone who just likes to do a lot of miles a day, I'm kind of a doty rider, I didn't need 130 or 150 or 200 horsepower like some of the newer sleds on the market have. It really is a touring machine that fits the style that I like to ride. And the chassis itself really still is nimble enough, so in the twisties where it's, to me, the most fun, point to point and around the corners, it does a great job um, keeping up with the groups that I ride with. However, once I bought the machine, the, uh, I bought it from a dealer and they went through all of the sort of idiosyncrasies of the newer sleds. I realized there's a few things here that are different from my old Polaris, which was maybe older technology. So I got about six things that I want to talk to you about today. And I think I want to start with one of the simplest things, and that is how to get the seat off of one of these excess chassis. Okay, let's have a look. When I bought this machine, I bought it from a dealer and they walked me around and they showed me how to get the seat off and all of the little things that I'm going to talk about today. But I'll be honest, after a while, I really never take the seat off of it and I forgot how to do it. I knew there was a release somewhere. I couldn't find it. And unlike my old Polaris snowmobiles that were bolted from underneath, this actually sits on the fuel tank. So I have to admit it. I went on to YouTube to figure out how to get the seat off again a couple years ago. And it really couldn't be any simpler than, than what it is. Basically, at the front of the seat, underneath some of the, the material here, you reach down with your fingers and there is a release that you lift up on. You hear it click there. Then basically the seat sort of wiggles back on some rails and you lift it up. And you can see it's pretty easy to get off. Now, this here is for my heated seat. So to get the seat completely off, I'd have to unhook this cable. But overall, it's a very, very easy system to both take off and put back on. Now, thieves know how easy these seats are to get off. So a lot of owners will take these seats in with them at night if they're staying in an area that they're uncomfortable with. I haven't really had to do that. Most of the places I stay at, well, they have locked compounds, but it is something to keep in mind when you do buy one of these machines. Okay, let's look at the next thing. Now this next item is something that many manufacturers have implemented, but for me, it was new. And that is this little guy right here. Now on my old Polaris's, 
If you wanted to get the belt off, you had to basically turn the secondary to, to uh, the secondary clutch to get a little bit of free play in the belt, and then you could walk the belt off. And sometimes it was difficult to do, especially if you were new to snowmobiling. Now this tool is interesting in the fact that it will allow you to open up the sheaves, and then this tool will allow you to adjust belt deflection. Let's have a look at that. Now that we have the cover off of the clutches, we can take a look at what this little key does. Um, it's two primary functions. So the first function is to actually open up the secondary drive sheaves so that you can change the belt. Now to do this, I've lubricated these threads just with a little bit of white lithium grease. And right here, is a threaded hole that this threads into. So it basically um, just fits in and you turn it. And if you watch the sheaves, they open up and the belt drops down deep into those sheaves to allow you to change your belt. Now on my old Polaris, I didn't have one of these. And on many older sleds, it's the same case. To get the actual belt off, what you would have to do is grab a hold of it and pull up and over and it would sort of open up the secondary and it would fall down in or you'd have to sort of wrestle with it a little bit to try and get enough slack into the belt so that um, you can actually walk it off like this. So that is the first function. The second primary function of this key has to do with this little Torx head here. Now in order to adjust belt deflection this funny shaped threaded nut has to move in and out on this threaded shaft in order to increase or decrease spring pressure on these secondary sheaves. Now it is held in place by a pinch bolt right here and this key has the right Torx head to loosen off that pinch bolt. So the process is pretty simple. You basically loosen off the pinch bolt and then you use this tool that's also in your toolkit to move that nut either clockwise or counterclockwise, moving that threaded nut in and out on that threaded shaft. Now, you adjust it a quarter turn at a time, you tighten down the pinch bolt, and then run the engine up, or you can turn it by hand. And this allows you to adjust your belt deflection. So, it's a lot easier than it used to be to do this on a lot of older sleds. And as I said, many of the new manufacturers have very, very similar technologies. But if you come, like I did, from a really older style sled to a new one, this is absolutely amazing. And it's just a little piece of bent rod. So anyway, that's how that works. Let's go on to the next tip now. The next thing I wanna show you is really simple, but if you don't know about it, really can be frustrating and that is just how easy it is to take these side panels off on an excess chassis. So basically to open the side door there's two rubber straps located up here one on the top one on the bottom and then there's this pull pin sort of on the side that you pull open. Now once you get that done you pull up on the upper strap and the door swings open and it's pretty good access for checking your oil um, for just sort of looking at different things, it's, it's pretty good. But let's say you want to change a belt or adjust your clutch. Well, this door can really get in the way, especially on the side of the trail or like I'm in here with a shop. You're constantly closing the door and opening the door to walk around it. But Skidoo was smart enough to actually make these doors really easy to take off. It goes something like this. When the door is open, you lift up on it and you swing the lower portion out and drop it down and the whole door comes off. It really is easy to do, gives you great access to both sides, and for the four seconds that it takes, it protects this from getting damaged if you happen to slip on the side of the trail and take out your side cover. It would really suck. It's a good point to know. The next thing I wanna talk about is the heated grips and the heated thumb on the Skidoo here. Now, when I first got on the snow with this, the first time I had it out, 
I had it there burbling, idling away, and had the grips cranked up as high as they'd go. And there was no heat at all in the grips. I was really worried that I had a problem, either a blown fuse, or maybe they were wired incorrectly, or I just got a dud right from Skidoo. What I didn't realize is that some years of Skidoo, um, the heated grips don't actually activate until the RPM on the engine reaches a threshold. And I think it's 2000 RPM on this particular machine. Then all of a sudden they spark to life and they work really good. Now that's the case with mine. I, once I'm riding, there's no problems. And I know now that when I stop, the grips are going to start to cool off and they cool off really fast. So you need to be aware of it. And I understand that there is a fix if you take this to your Skidoo dealer. I believe they can reflash the computer in it so that the grips are on all the time. Now, for me, it really isn't too big of a deal. I run hot anyway. My hands never seem to get cold. I ride with very thin gloves. And when I do get into the minus 30, minus 35 degrees, I put bar end muffs on that cover the entire control assemblies and my hands go inside and they're nice and warm. But it is something to keep in mind that if you're looking for a used sled and the grips don't seem to work, you might want to rev them up and see around 2000 RPM if they don't fire back to life. It's just a little thing to keep in mind. The next item really is more of a safety issue than anything and that is just understanding where your fuses are located on the sled. Now this is all explained in your owner's manual and I highly encourage you to read it but I thought it's something that really is uh, good to know and something to add for a person who's maybe new to the sport or new to the sled. So we're going to open up the side panel on the right hand side here. It works exactly the same way. And for the 900 Ace, and this could be different for different snowmobiles, but for the 900 Ace, the, the actual fuses lie underneath this cover here. So it's really just a matter of pinching these two um, uh, toggles here together and pulling up. And you'll see all of your fuses and relays are all located in a watertight compartment. And the nice thing is this watertight compartment holds three brand new fuses, a 10, 15, and 20 amp mini blade fuse in case you happen to blow one. So it sort of ties in if your grips aren't working, maybe check for the actual uh, fuse underneath the panel. Overall, it's a nice clean design and it's watertight. I really do like it. Okay, the last thing that I want to talk about is this, your desk key. Specifically the fact that when you buy a 900 Ace, you can come with two different keys. So here is a green key. Here's the white key. What's the difference between these two? Well, the white key is your standard key. It basically allows the machine to run at its maximum performance. And this is what most people are using is this key here. Now the green key is what's known as a learner's key and it's programmable. So if you say have a, a young family or maybe you can only afford one snowmobile and there's others in your family that want to learn, well you can use this key to limit both the top speed of the machine and the torque that it produces, so the acceleration of the machine itself. Now with the key plugged in, the machine only hits about 70 kilometers an hour, about 44 miles an hour, but it can even be detuned, I understand, to limit the machine to 25 miles an hour or about 40 kilometers an hour. Now this is great for young riders or smaller riders or maybe riders who are just new to the sport and find the machine somewhat intimidating. A key like this can take a large full-size machine and make it very very easy and safe to ride and you can be confident that the people that you put on it learn properly. This brings us to the end of this video. And again, this whole video was geared towards brand new snowmobilers or maybe people who have switched brands over to the Skidoo line of snowmobiles. Now there's lots of things on the XS chassis and the 900 Ace over and above the six things I talked about that are interesting and well worth a video. But I felt these six things were something that even the most beginner snowmobiler should probably know about. 
So until next time, I hope that you get out there and try some snowmobiling. I know I'm going to try to put a lot of miles on this season and hopefully I'll see you out on the trail. Until then, you have yourself a great day and I'll see you soon here on Demon's Tinker Shed. Bye for now.